Okay, let's see how this lambda term would work in practice. Consider a company with zero net debt. This would make the debt to equity ratio in the formula go to zero and lambda go to one or 100%. When this happens, there is no leverage effect and the unlevered return becomes identical to the total equity return. This is exactly what we'd expect to happen for an unlevered deal. Now, if there is debt, lambda can either be greater than one or less than one. Consider a deal with a positive equity return and therefore a positive IRR. In this case, lambda would be less than one whenever a company's equity IRR outperforms its cost of debt. When this happens, we have a positive leverage effect and an unlevered return that is smaller than the total equity return. This is exactly what we would expect from our intuition. And you can play with the numbers to see that it also makes sense for other scenarios like deals with growth equity or deals with negative returns. So these are the final Munich model formulas for the EBITDA effect, multiple effect, free cash flow effect, and leverage effect. They are more complicated than the equations that we will discuss in the next video, but they're not too difficult to work with. In practice, you will usually calculate lambda off to the side of your Excel spreadsheet and then use that as a factor to scale the other value drivers.